A French nuclear-powered attack submarine gliding into a Scottish harbour might seem like routine naval diplomacy, but in today's strategic climate, every such movement carries deeper meaning. The arrival of a Suffern-class submarine at HM Naval Base Clyde, the UK's home for its own nuclear deterrent, is not merely a logistical stopover. It's a quiet signal of alliance cohesion, technological confidence and shared strategic purpose beneath the surface of NATO's waters. The Suffern-class centerpiece of France's new generation of nuclear attack submarines marks a profound leap from the aging Rubis class. Each vessel embodies the culmination of decades of undersea innovation, stealthier, larger, and vastly more capable. At around 5,300 tons submerged, the Suffern is not just an evolution, it's a redefinition of France's undersea warfare doctrine, its reactor grants it near-limitless endurance, and its advanced sonar arrays allow it to hear before being heard the essence of submarine superiority. Equipped to deploy cruise missiles, torpedoes, and special operations teams, it's a platform built for versatility across the spectrum of modern conflict, from tracking adversary submarines to striking targets hundreds of miles inland. But why Fazlane? Why now? On the surface, this visit fits into the rhythm of NATO's operational cooperation a friendly port call between allies who frequently train and operate together. Yet the context is telling. Europe's underwater domain has re-emerged as one of the most contested and strategically vital theatres in modern defence. From the Arctic to the North Atlantic, from the Baltic to the Mediterranean, undersea cables, energy pipelines and critical maritime routes have become potential flashpoints. The arrival of a French attack submarine at Britain's nuclear hub symbolizes a quiet but deliberate reinforcement of Allied solidarity in this shadowy domain. The United Kingdom and France, two of NATO's nuclear powers, both operators of nuclear-powered submarines, share an unusual relationship. They are partners, competitors, and occasionally strategic rivals. Yet beneath those complexities runs a current of deep, pragmatic cooperation. Both nations understand that undersea dominance is no longer a luxury of prestige. It is a necessity of deterrence and intelligence in a multipolar world. Every joint patrol, every shared port visit, strengthens not just interoperability but mutual understanding of how to protect Europe's maritime arteries. The symbolism of a French nuclear vessel at Fastlane cannot be overstated. This is the home of the Royal Navy's vanguard and astute class submarines, the very heart of Britain's deterrent. Allowing another nuclear-powered submarine, even from a trusted ally, to dock here reflects a level of confidence and coordination that few alliances can claim. It's a reminder that deterrence today is collective, not national. The same waters that hide Britain's silent guardians now also host France's newest hunter-killer, a subtle demonstration of unity beneath the waves. Technologically, the Sovereign represents France's belief in independent capability within an allied framework. Built under the Barracuda program, it incorporates lessons from decades of nuclear propulsion and acoustic warfare. Compared to the Rubis class, its noise signature has been dramatically reduced through pump jet propulsion and new hull coatings. It's equipped with the Psycobs combat system, capable of fusing intelligence from multiple sources to deliver real-time situational awareness. And crucially, it can launch the MDCN naval cruise missile, giving France a precision land attack capability from the sea, a strategic tool that aligns Paris more closely with the US and UK approach to power projection. So, what message does this visit send? It's not confrontation, but confidence. It signals that NATO's undersea network is tighter than ever, even as global rivals invest heavily in submarine fleets of their own. Russia continues to expand its northern fleet, conducting patrols closer to western waters. China is testing the boundaries of the Indo-Pacific, and even smaller states are investing in subsurface deterrence. Against this backdrop, a French boat surfacing in a British port is a reminder. Western undersea warfare remains coordinated, credible, and quietly assertive. There's also a logistical and human element to such visits. Submariners from both navies exchange procedures, maintenance practices, and tactics. Joint exercises build familiarity that could one day prove decisive in crisis. Baslane offers not just a berth, but a bridge between crews, between doctrines, between two nuclear nations whose fates are intertwined in Europe's defense architecture. The timing also aligns with broader shifts in NATO's posture. Since 2022, the alliance has prioritized maritime domain awareness and undersea infrastructure protection after incidents like the Nord Stream pipeline explosions. New surveillance initiatives and anti-submarine exercises have intensified across the North Atlantic. France and the UK, with their advanced nuclear fleets, are central to these efforts. The Suffren's appearance in Scotland can thus be read as both a practical stop and a political signal, reassurance to allies and deterrence to potential adversaries. Still, beneath the optics, there's a deeper story about Europe's strategic autonomy and the realities of modern deterrence. 
France, unlike the UK, maintains its nuclear arsenal entirely independent of NATO command, yet its forces frequently integrate into allied operations. The Souffrant's presence at Fastlane is a delicate balance between sovereignty and solidarity, between France's independent defense identity and its role within NATO's collective security umbrella. It's a balancing act that defines much of European defense politics today. Could this also foreshadow greater Franco-British cooperation in submarine technology? Perhaps. Both nations face similar industrial and operational challenges, aging fleets, costly modernization, and the growing complexity of undersea warfare. With programs like AUKUS redrawing the map of nuclear submarine collaboration, Paris and London may find new incentives to deepen their bilateral work, even informally. After all, the sea has always been a shared frontier too. And in a world of evolving threats, shared frontiers demand shared strength. The arrival of the Suffren at Faslane is therefore more than a courtesy visit. It's a living expression of Western maritime power, silent but unmistakable. In an age when wars are waged in full view of satellites and social media, the most consequential contests still unfold unseen, in the depths. There, noise is death and secrecy is survival. Submarines are not just machines of war, they are instruments of strategy, diplomacy and deterrence all at once. As the piper played aboard the French vessel entering the Scottish base, tradition met technology in a single frame, a symbol of how old alliances adapt to new dangers. In the dark waters of the North Atlantic, where data cables hum and deterrence patrol, the presence of the suffering reminds friend and foe alike that the silent service still speaks volumes.